Hey developers, this is Narendra back with this Vue.js series that we are doing currently. And currently I have flushed my database. So currently you cannot see any post inside my database at all. But still there's a bug which is like, if there's no post in my database, then how I am looking this on my this uh, this pagination stuff. So this is a very small fix which I'm gonna do as well as we are also gonna work on the edit post functionality and even we are also gonna work on the delete refresh. So in the previous video as you can see once we were deleting the post and we were still able to see that post there so we will do that also. So let's see in the action how we can do that. So currently in my users post component or the route that we have created which goes to the my post inside the dashboard so in here what I'm gonna do I will put an if condition to this pagination stuff so if I check in my database um, with the network tag we get this authenticated post and inside that we have this post object so we put a conditional on this post on this pagination stuff that we have so we'll look if the length is not zero of the post object that we are getting we'll render this otherwise we'll render something else so i'm gonna put that we if and we'll get this thing that we have and that length else i'm gonna render something else that is div and inside that div we'll be having our paragraph which will be v else sorry there are no post in the database so let's see in action and this post is reloading this component is reloading and now you can see it is fetching that post so currently you can see that so there are no posts in the database. We are getting that thing and that pagination stuff is also gone. So let's quickly add one post. And this one is, let's say post one. This is the post one. Learn view the JS with codebook INC. Uh, let me bold this one and make it of a heading 4 so it looks quite bold and enlarged text. We'll add one image on that. Uh, let me quickly grab one image for this one inside the post, not on the heading. And this one is one picture which I have from my Goa grip. So that's here. And you know, this is not related, completely not related with the post, but or Vue.js but still I just wanted to add some image on that and we'll simply say hello world and I'm gonna use a featured image for that so that featured image functionality also we did in the previous video and let me add that and now you have that featured image over here and also everything is working fine for now let me add that post and this might take a moment to add it because I'm using most of the services for free. So that's why it is taking quite a bit of time. And uh, let me view that post real quick. And that's how it is. I don't know what went wrong with this one. Half of the image is uploaded. So let me, we'll change this image with the new image that we'll do in the previous video. But you can see that our main motive behind creating that if else statement has already achieved now that's one more thing on the deletion of this post we were not able to refreshing our query so let's fix that in a bit so currently I'm on my post item component so this is the parent component actually you can call it for now grand parent component this is a parent component and this is a child component so this is inside nested inside this component and this one is nested inside this component. So what I'm going to do on the click of this deletion button, 
once our post is deleted inside this asynchronous method that we have created that is called delete post i'm gonna emit some kind of event or kind of notification to the parent component which will get to know that something has changed in my child component and that has to be reflected back in my grandparent component so let's see in the action and we'll make use of event emitters here so the way we can do that by using this v component property emit so let's say we are gonna notify notify something delete post and then we listen for this event inside its parent component that is our post list component over here so the way we can do that we can use on delete post again here from here we want to notify that to its its parent component that is users post so this is was a children component then it was a parent component and then it was a grandparent component so we'll notify that again so we can again make a use of event emitter which will emit some notification to the users post component that we have so we can again make use of that and since we are going to use it directly in here so we no longer need this keyword over here and now we will again listen for that inside this users post component so here delete post and then what we are going to do so in here this v slot template that we have already created in the previous videos we have a access to something called after results we have access to something called to query so now we can make the use of this query inside this event and query dot refetch and this is a kind of function so which will refetch query or re-execute that query on that event when listen inside this so everything is reloaded over here or let me quickly reload it again and now we have that post over here so if i delete this now this might take a moment and now you can see that post is deleted and now we that query has automatically refreshed that thing over here so we can see that notification and that component is automatically re-rendered itself based on the new query or the new query result that we executed just now so in my home component if you see that we are still able to see this news feed and in the same manner we can fix this too so here inside the data we are get post by limit and page let me copy that property and again inside all this post component that we have inside our views here we can again make the use of this v else condition over here actually home component so we can again make the use of it and we can put that if v else conditional so if there's something inside that data dot post dot if there's something inside this thing if the length is greater than zero then only we'll render this otherwise and now it's refetching itself and now we cannot we no longer see that thing and we can also put else conditional just below which is a div v else and inside that i'm gonna give a b with the class of text center sorry there are no post in your feed so let's save it and we'll find that here sorry there are no post in your feed so let me put an exclamation mark let's save it so this should do our job for now and there's nothing inside that so we cannot see anything and same will happen over here sorry there are no post in the database so that's how it is working it's very simple and sleek now it's time to go ahead and create one post inside our add post and now we are going to use edit post functionality so for that we need to have one post inside our database so let's go ahead and create one this is sample actually sample post one sample post one and let me 
make of, of heading three. Let me add one image. So I'm gonna make the use of my same image that we had on the Goa trip. Hello world, hello Goa actually, let's try that thing. Let me choose one file for the cover image and I'm gonna make the use of that image that we used earlier. So this image is now uploaded. I'm gonna add that post. And now you can see that post is added and uh, inside the home component or on the feed page we can see that post over there if i click on the read more we can find that post over here so everything is rendered and looking nice and clean these are the things that we did in the previous videos now it's time to go ahead and add that edit fun edit post functionality so in my post item component that i have already have and this uh, there are a couple of ways to do that so one way is to like i create something like edit post component which is one way and the other way is just to make reuse the component that add post because most of the things we already have already created on the add post so this is one way the other way is to go with the edit post component separate but i don't feel like using this edit post component separately so i'm gonna get rid of that which i created behind the scene just for the testing purpose and let's see if i haven't mentioned that inside my route and no it's working fine so i'm gonna reuse this add post component that i already have so inside my post item on the click of this edit button again i'm gonna use this router push and this time we'll go to this add post component but with a different parameter inside that oh this was going to dashboard component and then add post component and now i'm gonna make the use of this same keyword that i have that's here and i'm gonna use a make a make the use of parameter so this will be query actually and edit so here we have a query variable that's called edit and inside that we are passing that post id so let me save that and see how it looks here so on the click of this button we'll go to this add post component only but now this time we are passing a edit query parameters so let's reload this whole application that we have and it's still fetching later we'll replace with the loading component over there and now if you notice in the url we are going to this add post component only but right now we are passing an edit as a query inside that and now on the base of this query parameter that we are passing inside the url we can change this component or we can program this whole component to perform in a certain manner and also you can find that you can see that let me go back if i click on that also you can see that the value of this edit query parameter that we are passing inside the url we are binding it with the id of that post so now we can make the use of this thing in order to write these things even to fetch that query from the backend or fetch that post from the backend so let's see how we can do that so currently inside my this add post component that i already have i'm gonna create a computer property which will keep the track if that edit mode is there or not so let's see that so inside this component property i'm gonna create a function that is edit mode and all computer property inside the vue.js should return some value otherwise it won't work at all because and it's gonna throw some error so it will return our this dot and now we are gonna make the use of route and we will look for that query if there is something actually query dot edit if there is something then we'll return true uh, otherwise we'll return false so let me save that and let me quickly preview that inside this pre-tag that we have so i'm gonna render a pre-tag 
and I can simply use this edit mode with M capital inside that and currently we are passing a parameter so it is looking for that edit mode is there which is still which is in a true state if I go to the post component and I click on the add post and right now you can find that it is false because this we don't have anything inside the query parameters that we have so we can make the use of it but this thing is not a better way to do that actually this is a this is the same thing I'm gonna do that using this thing so if with a double exclamation mark so if this thing is undefined then this whole value will be returning false otherwise it will be returning true so still if I go to the query parameters it will be the same thing so let me go to this post component and click on this edit mode and now if I go to my view console let me expand this a bit so inside that we have an index anonymous component view editor and everything is there if I click on this part we'll look for the computed property that is edit mode it's true but if I go back and click on the add post and again click on this anonymous component we see edit mode is false so that's how we are gonna work and now we're gonna make this make the use of this variable so first of all I'm gonna change this heading as well as this button based on the value of this edit mode so we can do that so first of all let me cut this out and we'll check for this edit mode if that edit mode is there we'll say update post or you can call it edit post and let me save that and currently we don't have that thing here so if I go to the post component and now if I click on this edit and now we'll find that edit post is there so that's the first thing secondly I'm gonna create I'm gonna copy this button again just at the bottom and I'm gonna call, make it update post and now we'll use v if conditional so v if if edit mode is false then we are going to render this add post button otherwise we are going to render this update post button so let me save that real quick and now i'll find that update post is there so whole component has been changed and now we need to pre-populate these fields and that we can do using our created hook of this component so let's see in the action how we can do that so just below the methods I'm gonna create a new function which comes along actually it's a lifecycle method and this will be kind of we'll look for that if this dot edit mode is true then we'll fetch that query so fetch that post from the backend using GQL so GraphQL server or GQS let's name it for now GQS and we'll create that method so let me quickly create that function over here and we always have the, have the access to this playground that I have so let me this is already running on this part application over here we paste that and it's reloading it and now we can see that playground is there we can look into the schema documents that we have or even the docs there is a thing called get post by ID and based on the ID that we are passing inside this variable we can fetch that post so there's a post already that query has been already created that's it that's this one so I'm gonna quickly grab this one from here and in here I'm gonna create a new function actually new variable so get post query actually let's name it get post by ID query 
and let's paste it. Let me format it a bit so it looks nice and clean. And we don't need author feed because this post is already being uh, already from the author only. So author is only going to update this thing. And also now we don't need this created at and as well as updated at fields. So let me get rid of these two also. Let's save it for now. So in here, I'm going to create a new function called async get post. And here I'm going to make the use of that thing. So I'm going to first of all say let data equal to await because this is a Apollo query and this might things take some time to resolve that from the backend. So dollar Apollo client query and inside that query we are going to pass our query object and within the GQL string we have to pass that query object so this dot get post by ID query and we'll pass a variable so within that variable it is taking an ID as an parameter inside that so we'll pass that ID and that ID we can get it from our this edit edit value that we have inside the query so we can simply say this dot dollar route dot query dot edit so whatever the value of that edit is there it will be automatically passed in here and I'm gonna put a console log statement over here let's say what do we get inside the data and in here I'm gonna call this function that we have created so we can simply say this dot get post function and we'll call that function so let me quickly save that and inside the console this application is reloading itself so I'm gonna go to the post I'm gonna edit it and now you can side you can see inside the data we are getting that post component over here so since we have already bounded these values that we have inside the new post object that we have created so we can make the use of it again we can change the values of this thing this new post object that we have defined inside our data instance and the way we can do that by simply saying this dot new post equal to data dot and inside the data we have a get post by id which contains all sort of details so let me save it and now you can see that every all the data that we are fetching from the backend is being rendered over here so this is how it is bounded but on under the hood we are still using this add post component only but now our functionalities has been changed so it's quite simple and not very fancy stuff is going on here so now we can make the use of we can update this post but in this update post button that we have just copied over here that we have this is our add post button this is our update post button so I'm gonna create a new function called update post function and this function that I'm gonna create now just below this get post method that I've created async I will put that over there and in here let data equal to await this dot dollar Apollo dot and it is a kind of mutation so we are gonna mutate something and inside that mutation we're gonna pass that mutation property and that mutation property I'm just gonna register it for now so just at the top of this update post mutation and that also I can get it from my playground so if you see at the bottom these are the properties that I'm using from my playground and I'm gonna copy this string and paste it over here format this thing a bit and now this is an update post mutation query 
So I'm going to make the use of this variable that I have here inside this GQL tag. This dot. And it will take variables. So I'm going to make the use of this dot new post object that I have already as well as it is going to take some ID. So in that ID, again, I'm going to pass this ID that we are getting from the parameter at the top. So if I save it, so this these values will be automatically spread inside here since our this mutation is already taking title, content and featured image. And our new post object also has these properties. So it will be automatically spread it with these values inside that. So that's basically under the hood the, this work is happening and our application shouldn't be breaking. But now you can find that data sign, but its value is not being used. And the same thing is happening over here. So let me get rid of this console statement that I have. And even same thing is happening inside here. So we are just simply console logging it out. And the way we can save this effort by simply saying is clean disable next line and we are gonna do that same thing at the top too and as I do this nothing is gonna change our application should work fine so if I go to this post component that we have users post component edit this post we are we are seeing whole data over there now one last thing is left that's a loading state of the button because once the post is being updated i don't want the user to click that add post twice or thrice so that it will trigger that but trigger that function of creating a new post or updating the same post twice or thrice so i'm going to disable that button while it is in the process of updating that post or in the process of updating that post so i'm going to keep the track by simply saying is defining a variable called is loading that will be initially set to false and as this function is triggered, first of all, I'm going to change the value to change the value of this thing to true. Let me copy that. And once everything is done, I'm going to revert it back to false. Same thing I'm going to do with this thing. And once we fill that post, we'll revert it back to false. And same inside this update post. And once we are done, we'll revert it back to false. And once we are done with that part, I'm going to again push my user back to the dashboard, my post component. And now last but not the least, I want to have some kind of toast notifications after adding the post or updating the post so we can again make the use of swell toast so let's see once the post is added and everything is set back to the false loading state is set to the false added to the database and before pushing to the dashboard i want to pop out that notification so we'll simply make the use of that so eslint disable next line and below that we'll fire our toast so toast dot fire and this will take two options. So one is icon that will be success and it will take a title and we'll pass our string inside that post added successfully. Uh, let me quickly copy this. Oops. Copy these two lines. Paste it over here too. And we'll simply say post updated successfully. So let's save it and see in the action. So we already have this post over here. Oh, let me reload this component completely. So I'm going to make a hard reload. So it is fetching our post. Edit this post. And you can see still it's this fetching, but our update button was not disabled while fetching that post. So inside the template of that component, I'm going to bind a disabled property of these two buttons with is loading state. 
so just below at that here disable is loading if the loading state of the component is true then it will be disabled so these buttons will be disabled so let me quickly go to the post component again and edit that post or let me do a quick hard reload so if i edit this button now this button is updated yet the post is not being yet fetched from the back end and now as it is updated so let me do that updated and uh, let's quickly check update post function is being called update it and uh, let's update that post so let's quickly trigger that function still it is in the loading state and now you can see that toast notification is there and all that post is also being updated so that's how we are going to do that and now it's work fine everything is working fine as you can see so that's it for this video in the next video we'll start looking how we can integrate view validate and inside this login methods we'll use the make make the use of validator for the password fields also and same we'll do this with the register all kind of inputs that we have inside our application so that's it for this video hope you're enjoying this video a lot and this is gonna be quite an interesting playlist so share our words with the word people who want to learn this vue.js concepts and maybe in the future i'm gonna create this with view 3 version that is already out in the market but it's a face release so a lot of packages are yet not ready for that vue.js once everything is back to the normal then we'll start looking into that so that's it for the video see you guys until for the next time thank you